like a brother to me now. I want to thank my good friend who I've been knowing for 20 years, Kwame Nayo. Yeah. I admire Kwame life and uh, his, his advice to all his friends is to be closer to the Lord. And I think that's a good thing. You know, and I, I had it for 10 years. And um, I decided to, on my own, which is another thing that is a, a choice to cut it down, which um, I did in 1998, yeah, in Portugal. No, I wasn't, I just loved the, um, the idea of uh, dreading my hair. Uh, I wasn't a, rad, a Rastafarian, I wasn't uh, practicing anything. I remember when I started, we were in camp, I was in Settler at Winneba, and uh, uh, it just occurred to me to do it. And um, people started calling Pele and telling him that, hey, your brother is, is, is dreading and uh, he's now into this, I mean, all sort, of, all sort of things. So he knows me very well, and he, he just told me, look, I mean, I'm the one who take care of you, which he was for a long time. I don't have any problem with what you are doing to your hair. So you go ahead. If you feel okay with it, you go ahead. Because we were um, brought up uh, not to, I mean, my parents, they were very strict on hard drugs, drugs as a whole. I mean, discipline and um, respect. So in my whole family, you know, nobody drank, nobody smoked, nobody. But they attributed my dreading to smoking, um, uh, what do you call it, Indian marijuana. But I don't, I don't have any problem against people who do that. It's, it comes down to choice, you know. But if you don't know me, you don't attribute stuff to me. But that was what they did. I never got angry, I never got upset, no resentment, bitterness, nothing. Because I knew who I am, you know. And um, uh, the person who was responsible for my uh, well-being, I mean, my upbringing, which is Pele, didn't have any problem with that. So why do, what do I care? Um, actually, very good. It's been a very long flight, but um, full of blessings. Um, I've had my, my setbacks like everybody else. But the, the thing, the one thing that I'm really sure of certain is I always learn from um, the mistakes I make or uh, mistakes that people around me make and try to do better the next time because I have uh, realized that if you, you do the same thing, expecting the same, I mean, different results, it won't work. So m the way I approach things, not just football, life as a whole, um, I, I make sure that if it's not right, I don't repeat it. So I've had, um, I've met lots of people, good and both good and bad, and I've learned from those people as well. Not just the good people, but I've learned even more from um, the people who influence you um, uh, negatively. <laughs> I achieved a lot, and I give glory to God for that. Um, uh, I won just one championship, which was in 99-2000, and uh, with Sporting Lisbon. And I was twice semi-final, I mean finalist in the cup, also with Sporting Lisbon. And um, I won the Super Cup, which uh, in Ghana we say uh, champions of champions, yeah, with uh, Boavista. Um, I was voted twice 
uh, in a row the best foreign player in Portugal. Became second once in the, in the league with uh, Boa Vista. And um, uh, I was once uh, the third highest scorer in the whole of Europe. That was in 98. Um, and um, uh, twice the second best scorer in Portugal as well. So um, I achieved a lot. <laughs> Bu sezon 8. golünü atıyor Ayev. Kocaeli Sporlu futbolcuların gol sevinci Hikmet Karaman geldi görüntüye. Dakika 20. There is uh, something that people sit back uh, and write, you know, all sort of things and um, say all sort of things, but it doesn't really, really affect me, you know, because I remember after 98, I had an offer to go to Sunderland in, um, in England, and the Ghanaian press, I, I mean, it didn't, it didn't work out due to um, reasons best known to me and my club, but some people over here, like, wrote certain things about me and but it made me a stronger person you know but what i really want to say is i was very comfortable portugal is like my second country my second home i was there for nine years nine good years i left to china i left to um, turkey for a year came back and went to china and eventually came back to to portugal I, went, I had the opportunity to go back to Portugal because of the good things that happened, that I did during the, my nine years of playing there. You know, so I don't regret uh, staying put in, um, in Portugal and uh, living at the right time. I say the right time because um, I don't regret it. You know, people expected me to play in the bigger leagues like the English, the German, the Italian. Yes, I did play in Italy, you know, but um, comfortability comes in where you feel welcomed, you feel at home, you, um, uh, money is good, you know, but um, if you go chasing it, if you're not careful, you go past it. If you're from Africa, the moment you get to um, 27, 28, it's very difficult to get a very good contract unless you are like the George Weyers, the Abedi Peles, the Tony Yeboas, and uh, some of us haven't gotten there, you know, but still content with where we are, where God has, has placed us, you know. Um, I still had uh, a year and a half left on my contract with Sporting Lisbon. So when the offer came, I had to um, do some deep thinking, you know, because there are no guarantees that if I serve Sporting Lisbon, I mean the remaining of my contract, if I'm gonna have, um, uh, my contract will be renewed or not. Because you know, the big clubs, they always go in for, I mean, uh, bigger names because the money is there so um, the offer wasn't bad at all from China and I said oh, let me try it and see to go for just one year so they wanted me to sign three years and I said no I'll just sign one year and see if um, I like it and God being on my side, it went, things went on very well. And um, I was the goal king. The first time a foreigner, um, yeah, had won the goal king. And it was two years in a row, you know. So I decided to sign again for two more years, which 
I completed in style and ended up with one more year, uh, which ended just last season, you know. So uh, China, the experience in China, I cannot change it for anything. It's been great, great. My name is Ambassador George M. Weir. Whenever I'm in Ghana, I watch Net2 television. Keep watching. Um, actually, uh, I was satisfied, you know, but later on when I realized what potential we had, what we could have done if things were done differently from the FA's side. Um, I think um, I personally, like I said, think we could have even been champions. But because of certain things, if I tell you right now that the, the bronze, being the first African um, nation to win a bronze medal in football, we haven't even received a penny for that. You guys will say, I'm kidding. But that is the truth. That's the gospel truth. You know, uh, they promise us and um, they never fulfill it. You know, so all these things, I realized that um, if we were being given good bonuses, good allowances, we would have had extra motivation. Apart from the fact that we wanted to, um, to bring glory to, um, to Ghana, you know, that is our job. 